wallet is sobbing. I can hear it. From, I can hear it in the hall now. It is breaking down, crying. Turns out that Attila, the arrogant so-and-so, he's got a fake hammer. Oh, a fake? Yeah. Whoa. As I say, dick. Welcome to episode 82 of the Your Allegiance podcast. And yesterday I was going on a load of roller coasters with my kids and tonight uh, we're going on a roller coaster journey through one of Rich's custom factions, the Red Hellions. Is that right, Rich? Or do they do they come with a the or is it just Red Hellions? I just call them Red Hellions. I, yeah, I'm, I'm okay. a rebel like that. Yeah, that's fair enough. I'm always, I'm always uh, worried about the the because some people are like, uh, you know, it's not a the. And some other people are like, the the is very important. Like in our name, the Your Allegiance podcast. There you go. Um, Very good. So you're excited for that? You're going to be doing a lot of bio reading tonight instead of Mal? I am. Apologies, everyone that's listening. It's not going to be Mal's dulcet tones. He's still getting over COVID. It's, uh, I think you have a great, oh, uh, you have a great uh, <laughs> radio voice. I always yes. find myself when I'm editing the episodes, listening back on, I don't need to do much of Rich. He just sounds good. <laughs> there you go. Ah, oh, John, you don't get into my pants that easily. <laughs> it's only me I have to do stuff with, and Mal when he's sick. <laughs> well, and all of us when we're sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although sometimes that's not possible. You, you know, there's this thing on the when you're doing the you know EQ for voice, and sometimes you can you know make it a bit brighter if somebody is a bit too you know sounding sick. But sometimes that frequency isn't there to boost. <laughs> Because they're so sick. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think we'll be fine this week. We'll be fine. So how are you boys? Uh, another, what What are we, must be down to nine weeks now officially to Legion's Con. I just did my ESTA today for uh, for those foreigners, they know what it is. It's the visa waiver thing to get into the States. Just give $21, bribe and fill out a form and you're done. <laughs> I did mine ages ago, which which is very organised and not like me at all. But the exchange rate's got so much better now that I should have done it now because it had yeah, I, I, fifty on it. I noticed it was less in euros than dollars, uh, even to, after yeah. the bad exchange rate from PayPal. I need to go and sort my cash out. It's a really good, really good time at the moment. Mm. Yeah, I, I was in the post office the other day and it was 126 to the pound. Wow. Which is the best the dollar's been for a long, long time. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's when I went to Legion. <laughs> yeah, that's Rose, yeah. When I went to Legion's Con 22, it was 107, I think, because uh, um, Liz Trust had just tanked the entire UK economy. So, I, in fact, I took some money out of the cash machine in the hotel lobby, um, and it actually cost me more <laughs> in pounds than I got out in dollars. So just like, oh, oh my, my God. God, that is. Yeah, that, <laughs> I remember when the first year we went to Legion's Con, all of us, and I remember the exchange rate was particularly bad that year. I was like, my first time going to the America, and I was like. I'm actually getting done by the exchange rate. It was almost like it was, especially for me, that I was just getting this really bad rate. But uh, yeah, I think we were all just a bit unlucky. But yeah, so uh, any American listeners, probably not the best time to visit Europe and the UK at the moment because your your dollars won't get you much, yeah. unfortunately. Like you, Mal, I need to get my, uh, get my money sorted sooner rather than later. Yeah, well, well I, I have... got $300 because when yeah. I got home last year, I was unpacking everything, and then uh, Kerry was like, "Oh, I'll, I'll grab your wallet. Uh, yeah, wallet, your passport, and shove it in the like the family folder sort of thing." Yeah, and she's like, "What's this?" And she pulled out three hundred dollars in cash. <laughs> I was like, hey, that, I didn't is spend it. <laughs> that is three hundred dollars. I forgot to spend. <laughs> that's like that's like the best. Yeah, I forgot to spend. Yeah, that's that's another ten minutes of plastic packaging in the room that we yeah. missed out on. <laughs> That is the best, you know, yeah. emptying your, your pants for putting them in the wash. That is the best uh, ever experience, you know. Well, I was very good. I mean, I, I obviously did pretty decently at our table and uh, a lot of that was in cash, of course, and uh, didn't manage to spend it or any spending I did, I maybe did with card or possible. Um, so, yeah, I have uh, I have over a thousand dollars still in the in the oh, safe wow, upstairs. Wow. So, so I, I put it there and I said, I'm just going to leave it. I'm not going to exchange it. It's going to be a really nice uh, bonus for next year. And uh, that's what it's turning out to be as I open the safe to look at, get my passport to uh, 
you know, do the yes to application. I was like, oh, there's the dollars. Yeah. Wow. It's awesome. Yeah. I still need to do my Esther. My current one is valid until the 25th of October. And yeah. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if you like, like you do. I, it's, I've subsequently found out you do get a reminder because I got an email reminder uh, about mine uh, like the week before. Um, but when I, I think I might have mentioned it on the show previously, but when I first checked, oh, when is mine valid until it said uh, uh, it was like 12, uh, 12, or nine twelve, so I thought that was the 9th of December, of course, yeah. because that's the way the date goes here. But it's the American date format, so uh, thankfully I checked. I, I did think it was a bit weird because I, I surely got it in September. We got it 12th of September, obviously, the year because uh, they last for two years. So I thought it was, it was going, it's a bit weird. It runs out in December, uh, and it turns out it was because two years was September which is, of course, before November, which is Legion's gone. So, yeah. And speaking of uh, Legion's, we got uh, new retailer pricing this week. That was a pretty nice. Uh, so Jeremy had mentioned it on his show that the the convention pricing and the retailer pricing were going to start to converge. Uh, so what they would charge at conventions would become closer to what retailer pricing would be. Um, but that also meant that the retailer pricing would come down and what seems to have settled on is $45 for a standard figure, um, which is working out at 41 euros at the moment. I saw uh, the latest pre-order here in yeah, the German online getting, retailers. We're not getting quite as good a deal over here. It's £43, which is okay. a chunk more than $45, but it's it's better than it was. Yeah, but you had a bad you had a bad uh, kind of rate previously, didn't you? You yeah, had yeah, yeah. So uh, slightly better on the exchange rate, so that's good. Um, I think we're all happy with that. Uh, that might change the pre-ordering tactic. I think for me, uh, I might start to be going full retailer pre pre-orders. I don't know if it if it starts to go that way. Um, it might I save me money. Legion's gone if they're going to be making less of each figure, like they said. Yeah, but then <laughs> I, I I do think that uh, you know what they mostly in an ideal world, obviously they have to sell what they have in the warehouse. Totally understand that, but obviously as they go along, they can start to um, change how the warehouse looks um, by basically mostly selling at shows stuff that you, they only can get from them direct which would be obviously Figure Obscura, stuff like the Legion Builders. Um, I mean, Legion Builders are great show purchase, you know, especially people oh, yeah. that maybe don't know the line or people that are um, wanting to go to the show to kind of boost up their collection and get a bunch of Legion Builders that uh, uh, were maybe more difficult to get to, uh, when they were on sale. And, uh, and some other kind of exclusives, like maybe the Leftover Legion's Cons, you know, stuff that they've had and uh, stuff like the Mistros and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I think that's, uh, that might be cool if it ends up going that way. And then the odd figure, you know, from previous waves that they might have had an overstock of or whatever, but no guarantee. And they did say that they're not going to do, they've no plans to do the, what they used to do up until probably a Lithia wave, which was an in-stock sale shortly after, um, the the retailers kind of got to ship their stuff. So uh, all in all, I think probably good. I know there was varying opinions online, but I think this is generally a good thing. Yeah, I'd agree. I think, uh, as you've said, um, well, it, I don't think you actually said it here, but you've said to us before, it feels like it makes... And don't I'm be giving up my secrets. <laughs> no, um, it makes it... It's going to make it much more appealing to the retailers as well, isn't it? Yeah. And um, Good for the retailers too. Yeah, more exactly. business for the retailers that will help the help them feel they can get more stock in and yeah. in turn help the line grow potentially again. Because you're, you're still getting the... The lower price when you pre-order direct. Yes. But yeah. for that Which privilege, is, yeah. you're having to pay in advance yeah. and, you know, maybe give your money a year, year and a half out. Um, I think when it came to shows, okay, you're going to the show and you're paying the entrance fight pre at the show, you could say whatever. But there is a lot of shows around where they are. <laughs> 
And so those people, even not just for us being over the pond, but, you know, the people maybe on the west, no, east coast of America, um, had much better opportunity to get them bigger at shows, even though they do street teams and all that on the on the west coast now and stuff. But if they weren't coming within a couple, you know, 100 miles of where you live, you weren't never going to go to a show possibly, you know, or maybe Legion's gone. So this kind of evens the field a little bit. And yeah, for the retailers, it gives, you know, it, it makes people realize that that's probably the best secondary uh, way of getting the figures. Um, because, uh, yeah, if when does the secondary market go up? It's always when the retailers sell out. Yeah. You know, uh, and so if stuff is sitting at retailers for ages and not selling, eventually the retailers won't order extras. They'll just do their month long pre-order after the direct pre-order and uh, they'll take all the orders in uh, from customers and just order customer service stock extra uh, instead of probably what they do now, which is they maybe order 20% or whatever, higher, you know, multiple uh, extra on the basis that we'll probably sell them as well. And I can invest this much money extra in the line if they're not selling because... Uh, you know, people are going to shows and getting them for cheaper, then yeah, the retailers will buy less. The whole, the overall pre-order will be smaller because the retailers order is part of the pre-order and eventually the secondary market prices will be higher. So yeah, if you're in the system and you could regularly go to shows, you could probably think, okay, yeah, it's a bit worse for me, but it's it's a fiver figure. Would you pay a fiver figure? Yeah, I mean, to but, uh, you know, to kind of keep keep it that they have loads of retailers, you know. But you have to be you have to be realistic here as well. The people who are already in the community, they've got us, <laughs> you know. Yeah, um, yeah. they <laughs> True. to keep going. They need to grow, and so yeah. they need to appeal to new people. Um, and a lower price point will do that. And low and new people, they do get a fair few from from. Um, conventions and people being really good in the street teams and yeah. the studio themselves, but um, that relies on people actually being at the shows in the you, you know a, a outside of the US. That's not such a common thing. I mean, it's it's pretty much non-existent, isn't it? <laughs> Realistically, yeah. And and if people are used to ordering from certain retailers. That's a good way of them discovering the line as well, because they, they don't need to learn a whole new ordering process of going direct or, you know, going into the, the Facebook group. I mean, but there are, yeah, there it's are good also. when you're in the cabal for two, three years and everybody knows you and you can get deals. But when you're a new member, maybe you don't even want to go on Facebook, you know. Hmm. And there, Well, and there also are still people who are nervous, put it that way, of... Um, um, buying from abroad as well, aren't they? You know, so yeah. the the thought of uh, buying from an Ameri a US retailer. Oh no, 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 no. So yeah, because it's the unknown. Yeah. You don't know, and and like yeah, getting the tax, getting the customers bill or whatever it might be. If you don't, if you're not used to that system, it's just completely daunting. It's doesn't. It's not yeah. the dollar value that's the problem. No. It's the why am I paying more? What's this? I don't understand it. I'm getting screwed yeah. Yeah. because you don't know that system so yeah it's always better if there's a, a local way of getting it for sure when they can so um i think jeremy also said um excitingly that they're going to try and level off the price of legion builders at resellers as well oh so that's nice. always been the that's always been the huge step up you know 26 dollar legion builder and they're charging 45 dollars or whatever it is at a retailer um so they're going to try and level that out a bit as well and that'd be that'd be really handy yeah, yeah, that would be good, yeah. Although a lot of the re Legion builders recently have been in those reinforcement waves. But it uh, would be nice maybe for them to introduce a couple of Legion builders in, in the next couple of waves. Um, maybe there's you know, a new, new types. Yeah. Yet. <laughs> oh, of course there is, of course there is. I mean, just we, my we two pennies, but I'd suggest a lizard man Legion builder would be very popular. <laughs> just saying. Re lizard? I didn't know you like lizards. <laughs> what color? I was work. I was working on um, a couple of ideas for Legion's Con t-shirts myself. Today. Oh yeah. Um, 
and the, it's this fair to say one of them might involve a lizard of some sort. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who are you going to steal the lizard picture, picture from, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not a trouser snake. Don't worry, Mark. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> a trouser snake. <laughs> I think he's being generous, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> trouser worm. <laughs> Trou- a trouser chipolata. <laughs> oh my God. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> moving along quickly, quickly, quickly. <laughs> so, uh, apart from shirts, is there anything you've been uh, working on? We're going to talk about your uh, custom faction, Rich, but is there anything else that's been going on? Uh, oh, I sent you boys... Uh, a picture earlier um, of my first ever cosmic custom. Um, it needs a little bit of work on it still. It was a, a sort of rough go at yeah. it sort of thing, but it's uh, it's an Obian lean combined with um, a Terminator from NECA uh, and a 3D printed head. Uh, well, I'm very happy with it, although I've already yeah. changed what I'm going to do character-wise, so I still need to write a bio. But... Nice. Those NECA parts, look, they look good. They look like they'll work well. They do. The, arm, the arm's a little <laughs> bit longer, but as you said, Mal, if you just you can cut a little bit of the arm off and just glue the hand back on, and it's yeah, it's absolutely yeah. fine if you're worried about that. But if you just get the, the posing right, um, yeah, you know, straight to attention, John, and that you would you'd never tell. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, looking at some of the, we'll see some of your pictures later. There is some straight to attention and some quite well posed. So, <laughs> you know, variety is the spice of life. I always say. I think I burnt myself out with the uh, the new skeleton legion builder the other week. That's my posing done for the oh. year now. It's just like whoa, so much fun. Look, look, look! It's just it's still on my desk. Look, oh, <laughs> bits of them falling over. Yeah, when I was I was doing a bit of painting this afternoon or early evening, and uh, my kids were down and they were popping and swapping like crazy. I mean, they're better than me at this stage. He was there with the new bus. He was taking bits off. He was putting cosmic bits on him. He was it's like, I need to take photos of these, dude. You know, and then he put the Lee J helmet on backwards. And I was like, what's that piece? Did you pull something off it? And it, was, it looked really good backwards on the head. So there, now the back of it, you might need to do something with if it was like going to be a permanent custom. But um, it definitely looked good on the skeleton head. So there you go. Didn't take a picture, of course, but... Uh, Find out for yourselves. We all have one. Uh, and you, Mal, uh, I saw you posted an awesome custom in the Cabal. I have it here. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I've been sort of trying to get back into doing a few more bits and pieces. She'd been done for a little bit, but I hadn't. It's taken me ages to get weapons painted for. I've got another one that I'll try and post next weekend or in the coming weekends because that I finished a while ago and I'm just painting the guns. She she started. <laughs> My post was a little bit dismissive, but I just she started out as a plan to be something else, which I've already, I've still got plans to do. Um, but because I like the Bastet parts so much, she kind of just turned into a um, into a a cosmic kind of cat alien that used. And I mean, I I, I spent the time paint matching. You can't see because my it's a bit dark but paint matching the boots and uh i i cut up one of the other belts oh yeah and glued the pouches onto the bastet pe- uh, belt oh and they're then, glued on all right yeah yeah uh, lightly glued let's say um and and paint match that but then when it came to the weapons i just couldn't be bothered mixing the paints again <laughs> so yeah. um so i just painted them similar colors which and I actually really, really like the weapons. Yeah, they turned out great. My favorite bit. Kind of yeah, yeah. More close up of them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I really, uh, it's made makes me... such a difference on those cosmic weapons with the yeah. bit of paint detail, huh? Yeah, I think I'm going to paint more of them. It's made me triggered me to want to do that. Um, not, not oh, like you did them for the standard triggered figures. You. Oh, <laughs> oh, boom, boom! Comedy just runs through me. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Mal, comedy genius Kennedy. That's what yeah, right. No one else had called me that, but yeah. <laughs> well, you're on this podcast, so you're our comedy genius. Um, anything else on the go, or 
Um, bits and pieces. I've wrote a few notes down. Do you want me to go through my sort of thing? Yeah, that sure. I've been, and then we'll go on yeah. to other. So yeah, it's sort of as I say, I've been trying to get back into painting a bit more because I took quite a long break and it's it's spotty. I'm mostly doing heads, uh, a lot of cosmic stuff, and going away and trying to find some sort of interesting design ideas paint ideas and uh, so you know stealing them by watching sci-fi tv shows of various ones one in particular i've recently watched star trek prodigy on netflix um it's for the kids but it is fun um yeah and there's a load is it is really an animated or yeah yeah it's an animated one it's one of these where essentially the kids are suddenly capable of going on secret missions for for um oh, right. what's it called what what do they call it in uh, in Star Trek the the alliance no what's it called the I was going to say empire it's not the empire federation federation <laughs> um in Star Trek which is a bit like you know it, that's where it's aimed at kids and you have to suspend your disbelief a bit but it's fun it's easy to watch quite some awesome. cool sort of adventure elements but then some really cool character designs in it as well so i've been sort of taking it found a few stills of them and gradually trying to sort of i'm not good enough to copy them completely but try and do a version of them and and of course sometimes it isn't going to work anyway on a a painted model like that but uh, but i'm having a go um the other thing reading comics the comics i'm reading i'm sort of looking at other characters and you know their designs and um Alien Legion is one that I picked up after it was um, recommended by Trevor, uh, One Six Shooter, uh, last right. Road to Legion's Con. So I'm going to possibly try and paint a couple of things to look like the characters in there. Not not the customs themselves, just the heads, you know. To, gotcha. Um, and then the other thing I want to, I've, it's more sort of in the back of my mind. I want to do some space dwarves because <laughs> yeah. dwarves are so fun. And yeah, there's seeing, been some good ones. Uh, yeah, some very good ones. I think Mark Calvo had one. Noah had oh, one. An amazing one. Yeah, Noah's uh, Jeremy used the head that Noah sent. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, produced to do one. Oh yeah, uh, he did one. Yeah, or, yeah of course, the, Anthony. Yeah, 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 and and helped someone. I think I, I couldn't find the post again though to do like a little mining crew or he's helped them design a logo for it. And yeah, I need to do some, uh, and you sent me very kindly, uh, the Mark Calvo, Mar Mal head. Mal, oh, that's Mal right. Yeah. Head, yeah. That you gifted me that. So I want to use that for something. And, uh, yeah, that could be a good, uh, cosmic dwarf. Definitely. Yeah. One of the, yeah, um, definitely. one of the newer, uh, 3d people had a, Dwarf, a couple of cosmic dwarf. Was it Borderland Horde? I think maybe. Possibly. Could have been your stock like in their page. last year. Yeah. Oh, so again, John, sorry. I said you're stalking their page, so it's probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I spend one or two hours a day on it. It's not, that's not stalking. <laughs> yeah, Rich is there on work call and he's just like, ooh, ooh. Yeah. You okay there, Rich. Oh, sorry, it wasn't on mute. Yeah. Is this this vitally important thing? Okay, yeah. But this three D head, seriously, never mind. You know what's happening at work. This three D head. Yeah, I know it's life or death, but I mean, this is more important. <laughs> there is there is one final sort of custom that I've had partially in the works for it's probably a year, nearly a year now. It's wow. Months. Um, all of it is all of it. I'm so slow doing everything. Um. But, but that's hobbying, you see. You're you're a really a hobby painter, which is uh, yeah. that doesn't have any uh, reflection on skill or otherwise. It's that's more to do with the pace. You know, you're doing yeah, it as I'll a hobby. Here, I'll, you I'll do, do when you have bit. time. Yeah, uh, do a little bit here, a little bit there. I'll yeah. I'll decide I'm not focused uh, on a day. Yeah. Having painted a little bit, I'm like, oh, that felt yeah. far more difficult than it should have been. Leave it and and that yeah. sort of thing. So, um, but yeah, the other one is kind of I mentioned the Corvus Cabal. Yeah, as, as some as inspiration, I, I get quite a bit of inspiration from like the Warhammer and Warhammer Forty K. Yeah, and so I'm working on one based on. There's another Chaos Cult uh, called Tarantulas or Tarantulus Brood. Ooh, um, they're like spider people. So using um, 
a kit I got from, um, I think it was from the Wolf Den. Wolf King? Yeah, Wolf King Custom. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, yeah. 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 Wolf Den's the uh, uh, Facebook. That's their group. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, from uh, Wolf King Customs that was a spider head and um, spider legs that you could plug into the back. Um, yeah. And now in the late... Those. John's painted some for me recently, so he definitely knows those. Oh, oh yeah, I do know those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, they were the cool. ones I did. Was it uh, red, green, and yellow? No, red, blue, yeah, and really, yellow. Yeah, oh, really primary colours, cool. basically. Yeah. Um, and yeah, um, and of course now there's that head that we it has been shown on, um, um, on Facebook on the but the, in the latest Von box the spider sort of head in there is so cool. I'm ah, pondering nice. setting that out and, or using that somehow for the spider character. But yeah, that's Why pretty not? much my sort of bits and pieces I've been doing. Cool. Um, right. So I, I did a couple of big figures. So I did Cosmic Lizard. Um, this is uh, the DC Primal Age Joker Beast um, that I've just primed and... Uh, then had fun with uh, fluorescent so cool. paints and uh, color shift metallics uh, and stuff like that uh, to make him kind of cosmic and a bit crazy. Not sure what to do with him. Probably will bring it to Legion's Con, uh, at least to have a, on display at the desk, if nothing else. So uh, he's super fun. Um, I was going to do the teeth, but they just ended up like I was going to do the like the teeth like teeth, but they actually just ended up looking kind of cool there with a bit of the overspray. Yeah. So I think I might leave them because they just look cool. Um, you can't see them there, but in the pictures you showed us, the colour shift on the stomach and the belly. Bits, yeah. Really, really cool. Really. Yeah, so it's kind of, it goes kind of goldish green uh, as, as you move it. And then it goes into this purplish blue and then into the actual purple and yeah. green and red then kind of red and orange and there's a bit of pink along here along the the end of the kind of scales on the top that goes red into kind of pink so yeah it that's screams cool. cosmic there with that color yeah 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 it's and the right and out there it's just and the top half of it for sure will will glow under uv light that's for sure those paints so oh, excellent that'll be fun to do i didn't uh, I had no batteries in my uv light so i couldn't take a picture picture but uh yeah it looks good and uh that's him. So fun, fun. That was wasn't too difficult one. This was a bit more fiddly. <laughs> this is the bear <laughs> with the valiant rich for scale. <laughs> he's on his he's on a trip uh, to the caves uh, with the bear. Um, so this bear, this is uh, you tell me, Rich. How did you come? to get this this is a 3d printed sculpt it comes is. in two halves and i've uh, put it together with uh, cement and and uh, stuff like that so anyway how did you come across this so th this was gifted to me actually by the uh, wonderful anthony velez at noble bear customs um just out of the blue i, do, I put a fairly large order in um and i opened up the box this is like at least 18 months ago and i opened up the box and it's like what the hell is this it's massive I opened it up and it's like, oh my God, it's a full scale bear. So I messaged him and he was like, yeah, do, you know, good customer, do whatever you want with them. So I thought, you know what? I'm not a painter, but I know somebody who is. And as it was free to me, then, you know, I'm not going to sell it. We're going yeah. to give it away. Give it at away. At our table at Legion's Con. And uh, my plan, or the plan that we came up with, and uh, I think you had mentioned some some sort of a giveaway like this before, Rich, and this is where I think I at least ended up with the idea, is uh, we're going to have a pack of cards, and they're going to be your allegiance branded cards. I managed to, to get that done. I haven't got them yet, but I will have them. And uh, any anyone that orders from, or that purchases something from us will get a card. Um if you do a particularly big uh, purchase, uh, obviously you might throw in an extra card or two. Um, and once we've gone through the cards, uh, we'll get just a regular deck of cards and pull a card. And if you bring back the matching card from the Allegiance deck to the one that we pulled. Um, so, so hopefully we'll have kind of the cards given out on the Saturday one way or another. You, you know, if we're, if we're not selling like enough to get rid of all the cards, we'll give them to a couple of our booth buddies. 
and they can uh, give them away that way. Um, and then on the Sunday, pull a card. If you come back to the religions boot with the card, you get the bear. So pretty easy, pretty fun, a little bit of excitement. So yeah, it's um, a great. You did a fabulous job on the paint here as well. Yeah, John. thank you. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was, yeah, I was gonna do gold here on the trim around the face or bronze maybe, um, but I might just leave it. Let's see, it looks good as it is. It might. Yeah. Problem is, if you do detail there, you might think, oh, I'll need to do detail. I think another. It might distract from the face. And I think you've yeah. done a really, really good job on the face. And it's a really yeah. cool looking face as well. So. Yeah, I wonder who sculpted that bear. Or is that a kind of an, an enlarged sculpt from uh, like a miniature? Or? That, I, I don't know. It was um it was floating around, I think. I think Anthony might have got it. Might it have done been a free specifically file or something, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, or got it done specifically for obviously a noble bear. Name. Gotcha. The only other person I've seen with one, um, Brian Almeida had one painted up. I think a last year's right. has gone. Um, but he's the only other person I've seen with one. So, you know, there aren't many of them out there. I think it's fair there to say. There you go. There you go. So, yeah, it will be rare as well, but it's very sturdy for a 3D printed piece um, for sure. Uh, really nice. Um, so that's them. Uh, I'm painting a load of heads and stuff, uh, of trying to get ready for Legion's Con. And uh, I also got my uh, my books, Mal. How you got them last yeah. week? Excellent. Conan to He Man, and uh, these are. And then this one, I haven't opened this property yet. This is uh, after yeah. the world ends. Yeah. So when post-apocalyptic movies were telling the future, so uh, it should be fun. Can't wait to There's get dig into that. Probably in end there, up yeah. watching a, a load of uh, bad movies as a result of that. I need to try and or find out where good I've bad them. movies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, also, came I, I maybe make myself big here. So, also came with a mouse mat uh, where I got the mouse mat. I think it was oh, cool. a few quid more. The He Man one, uh, and then the beer mats. That's my favourite bit. Yeah, I'm going to mount them. Yeah, yeah. And they come in this kind about. of card, and you get a bunch of them like that. Uh, I think. We got maybe two or three, two sets of each or something like this. Yeah. But they're really nice. Yeah. So, um, fun stuff. And uh, the postage was crazy cheap uh, um, on books like that. It came from Paris. But even for you, Mal, it wasn't expensive for the postage, was it? No, no. I can't remember how much it was, to be honest. But it was, yeah, yeah it was I think bad. it was less than, it was between five and ten. Mine was five. I think yours might have been seven or something. I remember you Something like that. Yeah, yeah. It was mm. really good, but. For really two big cool. heavy coffee table books and uh, yeah. you know those other things, so yeah, not for you, Rich. I know, but uh, you know, the post-apocalyptic stuff would like, yeah, be interesting, that might be cool. Yeah. Barbarian stuff. No, yeah. I almost I almost dozed off when you guys started about that. I definitely think I, after flicking through that, I might uh, get a couple of custom inspirations or something like that. Definitely, yeah, yeah, definitely. So very good. So anything else, or shall we get on with it? Get into Rich's custom faction focus. There we go. Do this thing. RCFF. Red Hellions! There we go. Because Rich was, uh, we were supposed to record yesterday, uh, but because Rich wasn't able to make it in the end, I had time to do that. (laughs) <laughs> it's very good very not much time as you could hear but uh, <laughs> time nonetheless I'm before not sure anyone gets too excited any time, it would have gotten any better let's put it that way <laughs> possibly <laughs> not no that's mean I don't that is mean but it's it's true <laughs> before anyone gets too excited now as well it's not a biker gang despite the promo yeah it's it's not a biker legions it is um, myth legion stuff true 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 right red hellions um we're going to go through the characters uh, here for um, YouTube purposes and our purposes. I have a picture that Rich took of the character and we have some details about the character and then Rich is going to do the bio as well. So why don't you yeah. take us through this guy and you can tell the name first, Rich, obviously, because uh, yeah. that might be the easy to forget to mention. Yeah. And for anyone that's interested in these, they're all up on my, uh, yeah. on the Cabal uh, and also on Instagram. Uh, Richard Jones 5198 if anybody uh, 
is looking for me. Um, really original name. I didn't just go with the auto generated yeah, one. Obviously, say, yeah. <laughs> Because you, you, you didn't pick that handle when you knew you were going to be on a podcast. I didn't. Future, did no, you? no, no, I'd have gone for something. Rolls much. off the tongue that five, yeah. three, uh, even <laughs> one, even your eBay handle is better than that. <laughs> Actually, that's what it should have been. It should have been, shouldn't it? Yeah, darn it. You can change it. Oh, I don't want to confuse people. I've got such a loyal following now. <laughs> no, no, no. They, you can change the handle and keep your followers and all that. Uh, okay. Um, so the, the the idea behind this is, um, and Jeremy Gerard Kersim started me off down this line, this path of getting one, or in this case, two figures, and then just making multiple customs using those figures as the the base body. Um, I think it's a really cool way to give like a really cohesive sort of look to to the faction. I don't often do it, but I've got um, a small faction of scaphoid inspired figures, um, and then <clears throat> excuse me for the red hellions. Um, I wanted to use the Furious Four figures, so the um, Pelvicus slash Lord Bishotti figure and the Praetorian slash Uit figure uh, as the base. Um, I mean, all of these. It's also a good way for the marketing manager to get you to buy Baker's dozen of figures. <laughs> it is. I managed I to resist his kind of ploy with the relic guard, Templar relic guard. I don't know how, but. Uh, I was going to say, uh, so all those people wondering who on earth bought all those uh, uh, pelvicus Bashati figures. Uh, it was rich. <laughs> it was. I, I, I bought I bought the limit of 12 when they put it up. And then yeah, Mal, I got you right. to give me a couple as well, didn't I? And that's I bought a couple it, yeah. off eBay since then as well. So. <laughs> I distinctly remember because uh, it was this time last year or so, or it was probably around this time last year, maybe a bit before. But we were doing the podcast already, so I do remember you, you talking about your dozen uh, Pelvicus Bashati. Pretoria knew wit then was a bit less. It was. It was only about nine or ten of him. Oh. I didn't get too carried it. away with him. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes. So it was like, okay, I want to do a faction, have them all sort of theme and, you know, match each other. It's like, but everyone knows my love of custom stuff, so it's like, right, I got loads of crazy custom heads here, and a few of these heads I had, I had set up for other plans originally, um, and it's like, how can I get such a disparate bunch of characters and races and that together? And it was like a mercenary army. Here we go. This is how I'm going to do it. Um, so the leader of the the Red Hellions is um, a real piece of work called Emperor Mang the Malevolent. Um, no inspiration, obviously, for Ming the Merciless there. That's just a pure coincidence that that name sounds like that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> for those I looking can't, at the I screen... I can't, can't see... I mean, looks totally the opposite to Ming the Merciless. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's hot, yeah. He's... Um, so, yeah, so he uses a head that was sculpted by um, Gianluca Sirichello. I'm probably pronouncing that badly. Um, that was based on the design by Lord Bishotti. <laughs> Thank you, John. Um, based on the design by Lord Bishotti, so it was, it was you know meant to be it is on Lord Bishotti uh, figure. Um, from Wolfkin Customs, and painted by Jack Mitchell, who's an extremely talented British painter. Um, a lot of the stuff here is him and another extremely talented British painter called Simon Crow. Um, so there's a lot of that stuff in here. Um, I even got to use a Scarabus piece, though, in this one as well. So the staff is from the, I think it's Demon Fire Scarabus figure, um, which I managed to pick up year, yeah, three or four years ago before they got insanely expensive as they are now. Um, and the cloak you're, was, you're one of the only people using Scarabus parts for, for custom these yeah. days. <laughs> um, and then the cloak was for a completely different figure originally. Um, but then I thought, this guy's such a a-hole. And up his own backside, he's going to have a ridiculous cloak like this. Um, and the cloak itself was made by another very talented Brit, uh, Bear Black. Does some really, really good soft goods. Um, so it's like a proper shiny cloak with like the fur trim as well. It's just like you know, it's a look at me cloak. Um, so the the bio for him, Emperor Mang is is a man of pure evil. He is bloodthirsty for power and will stop at nothing to gain more power. He arrived in Mythos from a land far to the east with a band of villains, monsters, and horrific scum that have now made Mythos their playground. He calls his vile band the Red Hellions. 
The few that have survived encounters with them tell of the Hellions' utter cruelty and depravity. So I just wanted to set the scene as these are, these are nasty people. Man grew up the crown prince of an island kingdom, and willing to wait for his father to die to ascend the throne, he poisoned him. Unhappy with being just a king, he then declared himself emperor and set about destroying all the institutions that he regarded as a threat to his unrivaled power. He slaughtered his enemies and indeed half the populace of the island. Tales of his vileness began to spread across the ocean to, to other like, nearby lands. Fear his, fearing his growing power and ruthless reputation, the rulers of these various lands raised a united army against him. They overwhelmed Mang's army and drove him from his capital and eventually into the ocean itself. He and a small band of his most loyal followers fled. Over the next few years, he tried seizing power in many kingdoms, but without a large and powerful army, always failed. In one attempt, though, he allied with a long and dead priest who told Mang of tales of his homeland, Mythos. Intrigued and excited by this vast continent called Mythos, Mang set sail with the remnants of his army. On the way, he picked up some truly evil warriors to form his Red Hellions, the main thrust and most terrifying part of his force. Now operating on the boundary of Xylernia and Etheros, Mang and his Red Hellions, along with a mercenary army, spread fear and destruction. Mang senses this may be his last chance for truly great power, and so drives his men forward with the promise of untold wealth and power when they conquer Mythos. So we're, we're, we're already getting, getting introduced to what's to come, and it's not going to be, uh, not going to be friendly folk. No, it's, it's not a pleasant bunch. You wouldn't want to go drinking with them unless you had a particularly penchant for dying horribly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If you just sip in your drink, going, don't say anything silly. Don't say anything silly. Yeah. Don't get into a fight. Don't get into a fight. Just blend into the background here. Yeah. I love it. Uh, so uh, beautifully done, Rich. I, I'm not going to spend the whole time just telling you're great. So uh, I've read these bios uh, in prep for this episode and they're great. So uh, well done. We're going to just talk about the content from now on. Sound good, Mal? Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Or do you, or do you think they're terrible? I think they're awful. No, no, they're yeah. actually all really good. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think they're really good. I, as I said in, in about our last show, I love hearing Rich's sort of take on things yeah. and the way he does things because it's so different how I think and would do things and, and it's great. It, it's really it comes good. across so much more intelligent than I'm used to, which is... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, have I, know, yeah. I know he has, you know, he's gone to college and he's studied, uh, Greek, was it uh, in, uh, archaeology? Ancient history. Ancient, Ancient history, history, sorry. Um, so I know he must be at least that smart. So, you know, it shouldn't be a surprise, but sometimes <laughs> it is still, you know. <laughs> I'm just used to the guy that's like constantly late for the podcast. You know, that's a different guy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's a complete luddite with anything technical. It's like, like well, yeah, yeah. That's I, it. I can't. What? That, but I, I've come to the realization that being bad with technology is nothing to do with intelligence. That's just <laughs> being bad with technology. It's a separate <laughs> box. When I was designing one of the shirts earlier, I was just cropping pictures and <laughs> all this sort of stuff and shoving them onto a Word document. And then you took sent a, a, a and then took a cut of the Word document and just uploaded yeah. that onto a website for the T-shirts. Like, yeah, that oh. was Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, you sent a screenshot, was it yesterday or the day before, about one you were doing, and I was like, that's my picture. I can crop out the background for you. <laughs> and you're like, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah, it's ju just a mock-up. I was like, yeah, it's just a mock-up until you press print. <laughs> anyway, let's move along. Let's not uh, distract too much because we've got a bit to get through here. Pumpkin Jack. Pumpkin Jack. So Jack the Pumpkin was once a children's entertainer and acknowledged nicest man in the area. He thrilled the children with wondrous stories of far off lands and wonderful mythical creatures. He would wear various costumes throughout the year and what around all the autumn harvest wore one where he was a pumpkin. Jack though was so friendly that he was easily taken advantage of by those with ill intent. One such person pretended to have a love interest in him and won him over. They then stole the little savings he had and even took his costumes. Jack began wallowing in self-pity over the theft and was overcome by an emotion he had never experienced before, anger. He wanted revenge on his wrongdoer and he wanted it more than anything else in the world. One of the children he had once entertained and who now walked past this broken man lying in the gutter told him he should get revenge on his betrayer. How should I do that? Jack asked. Hire a witch to curse them, came the answer. However, Jack had no money to hire anyone and slumped back down into the gutter he now called home. 
Then one day a visitor came to town, a goblin alchemist called Swig, along with several angry looking goblins. Swig spotted in Jack a broken being on which he could perform all sorts of warp tests. To his amazement, he didn't have to drug and capture Jack, though. Jack came to him and exclaimed, I'm the pumpkin man, and I need your help to get revenge. I can help, said Swig. I will create a poison for you that will take care of your betrayer. All I need from you is a little cooperation first. Jack submitted to the experiments, willingly. Alas for both parties, Swig, like most goblins, gets as many potions wrong as he does right. Using the local gov- the local pumpkins as an unusual ingredient was a very big mistake. The second potion he tried on Jack had severe side effects and turned Jack from a mild, slimly built human into a monstrous being with a pumpkin for a head and fangs for teeth. This being was as fearsome in personality as appearance and gutted all Swig's men. Swig barely escaped with his life. After wandering for hours, the beast began to get some semblance of intelligence back, and Jack wondered what had happened to him. His question was answered when he saw his reflection in a stream. Driven mad by what he saw, he became the beast in nature as well as appearance. After killing a nearby farmer, he took the farmer's scythe and proceeded to slaughter the rest of the farmer's family. This being a pure evil now finds himself aligned with Mang and carrying out brutal murder after brutal murder. Jack the Pumpkin is no longer a child's fun friend. He is now everyone's worst nightmare. Oh my God. Did did you did you come up with the swig uh, part after the thousand swigs or? No, this was before. Wow. So wow. It, it's tied in quite nicely now with, uh, with yeah. the swig thing. Yeah. So yeah, swig was, you know, swig is now his own main character, but uh, he was in one of your stories before that. <laughs> You'll you have to sneak. Sneak Pumpkin Jack in the back of the thousand swig picture yeah. <laughs> if he's come to <laughs> slaughter them all for what they did to him. <laughs> I like that idea, Ma. <laughs> if, not, we'll, if not, we'll Photoshop him back in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously the pumpkin head you described in the bio. Um, yes. It's it's a bonkers pumpkin head. So it's it's got like loads of different eyes. Um, John, you painted one of these as a cosmic. Cosmic one, variant yeah. Pur- for me, purple yes. and... and uh, pinkish yeah but this one's a traditional sort of orange pumpkin color Uh, jason rodriguez sculpt uh, dustle dawn studio printed it and again jack mitchell painted it um that was a torso as well from the same same setup exactly um i wanted something that sort of blended in with the rest of the the uniform but you know it's got its own little bit of color as well you can't see it brilliant on this picture but it actually goes from the skeletal ribs and torso and about halfway up the neck it then starts turning orange so ah, it's moving nice. up into the head. Nice. Um, I couldn't find a good angle to get that, but yeah, Jack did a really good job with it. Um, the it. scythe is an action figure fusion piece, which Brian C. Put, yeah. um, printed for me like two years plus ago before I really knew Brian. Um, wow. But he printed out a load of weapons for me and sent them through. And then uh, our friend Zemo at Prop Masters um, painted it up for me as well. And then another uh, bare black cloak. Nice. Um yeah, Bear Black, he's also Little John in some Robin Hood uh, experience thing, isn't he? So, Yes, he also uh, has been known to play uh, Hagrid in the Harry Potter stuff as well. Wow, so there you go. He's a yeah. pretty cool guy. Tall lad, big beard, yeah, yeah, does all that sort of stuff. He fit in well with Legion's gone, yeah, to be honest. Very yeah. Legion's, uh, yeah. Uh, cool, so let's get on to our next uh, member. The Red Hellion, known simply as the Penitent One, is a being of constant inner turmoil. No one knows who he originally was or what brought him to this current state, as he is a being of very few words. When he accepted Mang's offer to join the Hellions, he simply said, This will help me repent. Mang didn't care why he joined, though, he simply wanted a brutal warrior. Striding across the battlefield, the Penitent One is easily visible with his tall helmet and golden mask. Enemies rush towards him, then see this, his giant sword covered in sharp wire and the blood of previous victims. But by then it's too late, and he cuts them down as they try to flee. This emotional warrior is one to be avoided. Nice. So, and this, um, this, is, this is based on a character called the Penitent One from a game series. There's a game that I've never right. played. Okay. It's a, it's a really cool looking character sort of thing. So that's, that's where the name came from. Yeah, so it's a kind of a... Uh, what do you say, like almost like a wizard's hat shape without the kind of, uh, you know, just, just the cone part from the wizard's hat. Yes, just a really tall... Covered in barbed wire. Yeah. And he's got the, the metal face mask. 
Yeah. Um, his sword is massive and it's got barbed wire basically wrapped all the way around it um, to do some damage. Covered in blood. Yeah. Uh, and then we've got the torso um, that came with like a scarf piece as well. So just under the neck, there's actually a separate scarf piece there that goes with it. Yeah. Uh, and then the pauldron as well. So it's an entire set that um, Jason Rodriguez sculpted. Um, and these are painted by Simon Crow. Um, and Simon's great because he'll come back to me. Uh, Jack will as well to a degree, but Simon will come back to me and go, oh, what if we tweak this? Or what if we do this slightly differently and that sort of stuff? So he did some brilliant work on the paint here. Excellent. Um, you got some a lot, of, a lot of good reaction about this guy, I think. I mean, about them all, but I, I, I saw a good few comments. About yeah, I mean, it's, it's such a visual character, I think, because yeah. some people recognised it from the game as well sort of thing, then that drew a lot of attention as well. There's something about that head that may, uh, you know, it makes me really uneasy. <laughs> it's a funny one because <laughs> I'm not really a squeamish person or anything like that. That head is just weird. <laughs> well, um, hope you sleep all right tonight, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't think I'll have nightmares. I'm not quite that bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's the sort of thing you can imagine in a horror film just stalking you endlessly. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I'm getting away. I'm getting yeah, away. Yeah. Oh, crap. No, he's behind oh, me. Oh, no. Yeah, be, and I can imagine in this game would be similar. Right, you can say the name of this one, Rich. Uh, I'm not uh, going to chance it. Quetzalcoatl, um, which is quite the mouthful. Um, again, you wrote is, it. Yeah, this is well. This is based on a genuine um, thing. Yeah, uh, Mesoamerican god. I, I, I don't know exactly which um, which race of people. Um, but again, another Jason Rodriguez one. He did quite a few of these um, with the, the fancy headdresses and that sort of stuff. And I've got them all, I think. Yeah, I've got all of them. Um, but this one I wanted to be part of the um, the Red Hellions. There's just something a bit different. And I wanted it to be really bright. So obviously there's a lot of reds and blacks with the Hellions. But every now and again, I really wanted like a punch of color. So hence you've got the, the, fed, the, the sort of serpent hat that, uh, or helmet that's blue with the white fangs, gold adornment, and then you've got the the green going into yellow feathers on the back as well. So it just really stands out. Yeah, the pauldrons um, matching with the, the helmet is great. With the helmet, yes. Yeah, and the, the torso came with that same set as well sort of thing. So it's, uh, And then I use one of Jeremy's, Gerard's um, Acapura. Is that how you call it? Acapura? Um, weapons. So his turtles, basically, that he did. So it's like a big hooked weapon. Um, which I thought was more of a, you know, looked more of a, like a foresty type traditional weapon that, that some, a, a character like this might have. It looks like it could crack your skull or cut your head off. Oh, it really could, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and interestingly, this one was painted by our friend Joe Vassapolo, um, where he did a little bit Very of painting cool. of the Wolf King at one point, and this was one of the things that he painted. So I got that. Um, so the Dark One, as he is known to his fellow Hellions, is anything but dark in appearance. Quetzalcoatl is a warrior from the dense rainforests in the south of Mythos. Almost nothing is known of these forests except adventurers adventurers very rarely return from them. Adorned in bright coloured armour and feathers, at first sight this being appears anything but violent. But he is a devil in disguise. He is in fact a man of pure hatred and violence. Quetzalcoatl grew up in a village with the most basic of amenities. And while others thrived in the calm and serene beauty of the forest... He always wanted more from life. He was a constant troublemaker throughout his childhood and was regularly threatened with expulsion to the treeless world. The final straw for his people came when they caught him trying to steal one of their mystical power stones, the source of their portal's powers. He was banished by the elders and sent through a portal to a barren rock on an island with no foliage. Living off fish and coconuts, he spent years plotting his revenge against the primitives he grew up with. One day, a small fleet of ships came into view and upon seeing him on the shore, they moored nearby. Brought onto the flagship, he met Emperor Kang, Mang, and Quetzalcoatl immediately recognised a man with a similar thirst for power and love of fine things. He wasted no time allaying with him. When his work with Mang is done, he will return south and deal with his betrayers and take their power stones for himself. Nice. So, uh, a lot and going this, on there. Yeah, so with the power story. stones and the portals... That ties into another faction, which I've not shown yet. Oh, wow. A faction I call the Maze Techs, um, and they're based around that sort of thing. 
We're going um, to need a book at some stage, Rich. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's about eight or nine characters. Um, oh. uh, Nikki, uh, Nicole did a lot of the painting for me on that. Okay. Um, it includes a couple of lizard men, obviously. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> there may be a lizard type man in this action. We never know. Um, yeah, so I, I love this one. It's yeah. I, he our friend want to put is, a blast. Our friend is the Wiz. Uh, was very uh, Israel Ramirez. He was very happy with this guy. Yes, I think he said something along the lines of he'd commissioned it or something from Jason. So oh, he'd the, the head, yeah. yeah, and the set, so, or whatever. Yeah. It was it was very much some of his design input as well, sort yeah. of thing, and, and he loved it. He put yeah. it up. There's a group I'm a member of called I think Sons of. Might be a quite a so Cottle. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I think I'm in that one as well. Yeah. Um, and I'm in that one, yeah. So he, he shared it there. I don't well. contribute much, but I, I like the stuff. So, you know. Oh, there's some awesome the stuff in there, but no, like, like you, I don't tend to join it, Mal. There's some I'm really like, good. Yeah, because I love this there, stuff. Yeah. I mean, I, do, I, I don't own much of it, but I do love it. I think he mentioned it on the episode he was on with us. Uh, so that's how I found out about it. Oh. Yeah, there's one of the guys, and I can't remember his name, so apologies, but he started doing... Um a range of these or god beings sort of thing at least in three so far he's posted uh, them absolutely in the, superb yeah he's he posted them in the cabal, in the cabal as well cabal and they're so yeah. so good yeah yeah they're amazing okay uh lich priest i can say that name <laughs> and this Lord is a Cromwell. skeleton sorry this is a skeleton looking dude yeah it is so this is the undead priest that uh told mang about mythos um, so Lord Cromwell is a lich priest from a long time past. In life, he was the power behind the throne of a lesser realm. When the commoners rose against Cromwell and his king, he was brutally murdered. That was not the end, though, for this sinister power broker. Raised by a necromancer, he soon fled the congregation of Necronominus and the continent of Mythos in, in search of a kingdom where he could once again exert power in the shadows. He found himself in the island kingdom of Brucan and soon became the voice in the ear of its prince. Whether this was through foul magic or the prince's desire for the throne is unknown. Whatever it was, the prince soon came to power after his father was poisoned by a mystery enemy. Cromwell drove the new king to more and more foul deeds in search of increased power. His loyalty to the king was not rewarded, though, when the queen took a distaste to him and the king exiled him as a result. When the island was later invaded by Mang and his army, Cromwell immediately joined with them to gain revenge. However, the the invasion, like all of Mang's, failed. Cromwell, knowing he had nowhere safe to go in Brucan, whispered in Mang's ear of a far-off land to the west called Mythos, one of of its fabulous wealth and vulnerable populace. Mang seized upon this hope and headed off with his remaining men to have another attempt at seizing power. So, um, is is this named after the Cromwell, the British... Yes, okay. that's that's where the name popped into my head immediately yeah. from, sort of thing. So yeah, uh, an evil piece of work. Uh, yeah, he 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 did damage in, in my my country as well. He did. He's yeah, he's did over there, isn't he? Yeah. Yes, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. It's ironic that he's supporting princes in this because obviously in reality he overthrew the uh, the British royals and uh, in the civil war. But yes, so. Um, there's a set of pieces sculpted by Action Figure Fusion. Um, there's some just awesome pieces there. Lots of skeletal torsos. Um, this cool head with like a bishop's sort of hat on it. Yeah, as soon as, awesome. as soon as I thought that, it was like, that's awesome. But I've got a really good bishop in my congregation of Necronominus already. So it's like, I want that piece, but I need to put it in a different faction. So what can I do with it? Hence it came through to this. Yeah, um, he's, a, he's a bad bishop. He is indeed. Um, and then it's mixed in with a few um, Skeleton Legion Builder Bone parts as well, so you can see some of those. Um, I also took advantage of the fact that I used Praetorian's wrist armour, um, and obviously some people have had problems with the left hand falling out of the Praetorian figure. Yes. Um, there was a bit of a scandal about it, so it fell off when I was posing it, so I just left it off. So he's missing his left hand, <laughs> as that's just a decayed part that's fallen <laughs> off. Love it. I love it. Yeah. That's good. And I didn't... Oh, I forgot to put it in the, uh, the the bit here, actually, John, but it's also got a cape from Max Bird. Ah, okay. okay. Um, awesome cape with fur around the collar and then the red at the back yeah. sort of thing. So, oh, yeah. yeah, it's a Max That's Bird nice, cape. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, that's the usual thing of, you know, when people uh, yeah, have a, they've accidentally damaged their figure or broken something and people just reply, battle damage, <laughs> <laughs> which Absolutely. is the most frustrating oh. reply to anyone that's <laughs> upset that they've broken their figure. But yeah. yeah. Rot damage in this case, but yeah. Yes, it fits in very well. Uh, so... Tap into so, the mountain Oni. Oni, yes. So this, I absolutely adore this head. This is an Immortal Collections head. Um, yeah, Bruce and Carlo are just two great guys. Um, and they they have a lot of good Oni sculpts. They do, loads it's, of them, yeah. It's one of their things, I think. Yeah. When I snuck into the um, the Friday night setup thing in Legion's Con a couple of years ago, um, I was chatting to them for ages, having never met them before. Two really nice guys. And then this piece was sat there, and it's like, well, I'm coming back and get one of those. Uh, that's just great. So my original plan was to use it as a vampire um, with that colour scheme, a vampire only, but unusually for me, I decided to go a different route with it. Um, so Tapensu the Only is a disciplined and brutal warrior who brings order to the sometimes chaotic band of Hellions. A mountain Oni, as betrayed by his pale flesh, he was mocked when he first appeared in Lowland Mythos as a stupid and clumsy mountain dweller. Those that mocked him soon discovered to their cost that this warrior is anything but stupid and clumsy. Years of training with a mythical samurai of East Mythos had made him a deadly warrior. He fights with a remarkable calmness and cold detachment from all others, including his fellow Hellions. He has one goal in his life, to meticulously build on his martial prowess through measured and controlled combat. He learned from his sensei that patching in battle will get you killed, and that a calm inner is all important. Not inherently evil like some of the Hellions, he is cruel simply through his attitude. He doesn't care for anyone, he just wants to measure himself against opponents. Emperor Mang uses this brilliant warrior often when enemy champions call to the Hellions to send one warrior for one-on-one -on -one combat in lieu of a full-on battle between the armies. Awesome bio. Yeah. And I it's not I wasn't a crazy anymore, pose. but I just there's a, did. There's a little bit of the sword and the sheath action going on there. There is indeed, yeah. Although it's... Uh... It makes it more difficult for you to photograph because then you have to it go does. wider angle. You have to go wide, yeah. yeah. Which is why you see the picture here is a little bit more square. He's very cool. He's cool though, yeah. I love him. Yeah. And obviously the um, the Pavicus Bushotti armour works perfectly with this type of yes. Asian inspired figure. Yeah, because of the plate Absolutely. Sort of style, isn't it? Yes. So, yes, it so works the for sword. that. And it also worked... For, for Mang sort of thing coming from the east as well sort of thing yes. so yeah so did you say the sword is a Marvel Legends it's a Marvel Legends hand, hand ninja I think ninja. I could yeah. be wrong about that it was in a bits box uh, but I think that's where it's from yeah alrighty uh Washel the Mighty yes um so obviously named after Denzel Washington uh ah that's Washel. where it comes from <laughs> I did not yeah. know that <laughs> awesome <laughs> Um, and this was inspired by um, uh, a similar figure that uh, Giovanni Bly had at Legion's Con 22, which I stupidly didn't buy the second I saw it. And then when I came back to his table, it had already been bought. Um, it's a, a head was sculpted by Tiago Conti and printed by Mythic Bits. Um, and again, painted by Jack Mitchell. And you don't see the head very often. I think it was one of the earlier Mythic Bits ones sort of thing. So it's, uh, But I got it painted up to match the uh, Calavius Torso. Just again, it's a bit of a different uh, colour. And then he, I'm not sure if you can tell properly. I think you can with the picture. So he's got three swords as well. So he's got his sword he's holding in his right hand and then there's two more. And his hand's like ready as if he's about to draw one of them as well, sort of thing. Uh, one of the few humans in the Red Hellions, Washzel the Mighty is as proud of his fighting skills as he is of the, about the way he looks. He was always a bully growing up and still enjoys tormenting others. He veers from taking one, two, or three of the enemy by himself to demonstrate his martial prowess, to wandering off from the battle to torture a defenseless villager. He has no morals, no empathy, no soul. He is the living embodiment of the sort of scum Emperor Mang has recruited into the Red Hellions. And you've got a, uh, you've got someone to play him in the movie as well, Denzel. <laughs> yes. Um, apparently, the head was sculpted on a, a character from a, a, another film. Um, who I can't remember off the top of my head now, but this drew a lot of traction from people with comments and that sort of thing because of that. Ah, okay. Yeah, just get Denzel in a kind of a grey and black wig. 
We're sorted. Who have we got next? Ah, now we're into Rich Jones territory. Lachesius the Destroyer calls himself a demigod from the far south of Mythos. He follows the practices of an ancient long-lost culture. He has told many of the Red Hellions that is millennia old, that he is millennia old and has risen from his slumber at the return of his great god. No one knows if any of this is true. What they do know is that he is a brutal and ruthless warrior mage. Crocodilians have long been respected as great warriors in Mythos, and this nightmare vision of one standing there with its gleaming gold helmet is a sight that puts fear and awe into the Hellions' enemies. His swords and fireballs dispatch death to all those whose path he crosses. Any souls lucky enough to escape death or being sold into slavery at the hands of the Hellions are told by Lachesius that his great god has risen to cleanse Mythos. He speaks with no emotion when he tells them that their souls will be claimed along with all others as his god's army sweeps across Mythos from the south. Love that. I love the fireball. Is that from uh, that guy? Is it Chucky's yeah, Geek Chucky's Spot? Geek Spot, yeah. yes. Yeah. It is indeed. You can kind of recognize it. Uh, I have a yeah, I've been trying to think what to do with that. For, yeah, I've been trying to think what to do with that for ages. And it was just like, actually, do you know what? This is a, this is basically Loki. Yeah. Let's have some sort of magic effect and make him a mage. Yeah, he's very cool. So the head is uh, another... Action figure fusion sculpt? Action figure fusion piece, yeah. So again, it's one of these ones you don't see much now because it's it's a intellectual property. Um, yeah. So that people tend to skip past it, but I'd got it early enough that it wasn't a problem sort of thing. I bought this ages ago. Yeah. And another Jack Mitchell paint job. Yeah. And um, the feet randomly are, uh, were sculpted, well, not randomly, but they were sculpted by Zombie 13 and printed by my action figure customs. Mm-hmm. And I had them painted by Drew the amazing Drew Grubbs, but ages ago, like two and a half, yeah. three years ago, for a completely different character. And I've stripped that character down and got rid of him now. But wow. the feet, the colour of the feet match really, really well with uh, <laughs> with the head. So it was like, yeah, there we go. And they look they sort of crocodilian in their style. Yeah, they work really, they really work. well for it. And even if they didn't match perfectly, they're far enough away that, that it's close enough. Yes. And again, this ties in with another one of my factions. So when he talks about his great god having risen, and sweeping up from the south, that's from my uh, Swarm of Horus faction. That's their backstory, wow. which involves lots of crocodilian warriors and that sort of stuff as well. <laughs> More lizards. <Amazing. laughs> More lizards, <Lizard. laughs> basically, yes. <laughs> 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 Qua! Yeah. It's a, Qua's a great name. Nothing wrong with Qua. No. Just it, the way it's written, it makes me want to say it that way. <laughs> that was the name that um, Seba gave it on Planetary Dog Toys. That was the name of the school. Oh, is that so, the, the name so of the I just sculpt- literally just oh, took the name. That's a, yeah, that's a, Feels- uh, obviously it's a head sculpted and printed by Planetary Dog Toys and painted by Jeremy Gerard. The man it is, I bought, the, nice. I bought the head and wings from Jeremy. Uh, yeah. The wings are from a Toy Vault Balrog figure. Um, it says, not sure there, but Jeremy told me since yeah. where they're from. Um, and I bought them again. I bought them from him ages and ages ago, and couldn't decide the best way to use them. And then I was like, "Do you know what? This is actually going to fit in really well here." Um, and then the sword has got like a dragon head on the the hilt as well, sort of opening up, and the blades coming out of there. So that's a Jason Rodriguez piece painted by Zemo from Prop Masters. Nice. The Dragon King of Mythos are some of the continent's most ancient races. Not originally from there, they settled millennia ago, but have usually kept themselves to themselves. Generally a noble race, they have fought side by side with the forces of light many times. However, not all dragonkin are the same. Quar is one of the Red Hellion's shock weapons, swooping down on the enemy before they even know they are in a battle. He is utterly ruthless and thrives on the terror he brings. He is renowned for ripping off limbs of soldiers in a sudden aerial attack and then showering them down on top of their comrades. It's not just aerial combat he brings, though. He is equally happy engaging in hand-to-hand combat with his sword, Death from Above. A vital member of the Hellions, Mang pays him better than most of the others because of this. For Mang's sake, he better hope Qua never tells anyone that. <laughs> no no talk of wages in the dressing room. No, exactly. You don't want to be saying I'm only 400 grand a week and somebody else is like, I'm on 20, what the hell are you talking about? 20 is still good. Oh, I'd take it. I wouldn't complain at that yeah, sort of money. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, very cool. I love it. Um, I love the sword as well. I, I know you mentioned it's a Jason Rodriguez 
but uh, I haven't seen that one before. Yeah, and at this point, John, I decided just to cut the end of the sword off. It was yeah. Like- the picture's getting too wide otherwise. <laughs> well, I mean, you got the main part that's unique. I guess the end of it's yes. just pointy. So, yeah. Right. Sideshow Freak. <laughs> this is... I, like I love this. This is one of my favourites. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is a, a prop master's um, sculpt. The torso, oh, you know, the torso's got the braces. It's a crazy sort of orc with a top knot. It's, it's basically um, the... Krusty the Clown look like from um, The Simpsons, I think, but in orc psycho form. Um, so the sideshow freak, as he is known to his comrades, is a deranged orc with an insatiable bloodlust. Once a juggler, acrobat, and family favourite at famous travelling circus, this creature now kills for fun. No one knows what turned this once respected performer into a homicidal lunatic, but what it was must have been horrific. Now armed with a mighty cleaver, he butchers his way across the battlefield with abandon. Laughing maniacally as he slaughters his foes, even his fellow red hellions give him a wide berth as they fear he is as likely to kill them as anyone else with his as his once his bloodlust takes. And that mighty cleaver is the my wife is gonna kill me cleaver. It is indeed. The idea from Pete and Stephen Bishotti. Um yeah. I've got quite a few of them. It's a great looking cleaver. And this particular one was painted by Dustin Yoke. We don't see that much in the community anymore, but he's a very good painter, and he did yeah. uh, this one. It's his own YouTube channel. Uh, that yes, he still the does stuff on Thunder Nerds. I want to say the Geek Man and the Thunder Nerds, or yeah, something like that. Yeah. They do a lot of pop culture stuff. So if you like us, you'd probably like them. Uh, right, Prince Darian the Undead. So we got some undeads in here as well. Oof. Oh, of course. <laughs> it's me and this is a Von Box head so this is a head that people mightn't be that familiar with no so very quickly the Von Box is a monthly subscription that uh, Von Burke Customs uh, offer it's Brian Burke and Emil Wickman and they do one head each each month on a theme Mal's now fully on board with this aren't you Mal it's a, it's a great I am little uh, programme uh, yeah they, they, they. oh <laughs> It's one of those, I can't say that all the sculpts are to my liking, but I, they make, I want to paint them up and, you know, and uh, practice my, my painting and do some cool stuff with them. Um, and, yeah, um, then the, you get some that are just incredible that, you know, I mean, they're all fantastic, but, you know, some that really hit the spot for me that I'm just like, wow. <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's great. And this was one of the um, the very first ones. Um, because I was get buying the painted ones at that point. Um, so Brian Burke painted this one up as well, and it's just it's just a really cool sculpt. You know, a couple of horns, a little bit of hair falling away, and just the zombie features. It's uh, it's really good. And again, I've been waiting two and a half years to find the right body and place to put this. Um, so I thought, yeah, you know, an undead woodland creature. There we go. In life, Lord Darian Silverleaf was an elven noble renowned for his valour and courage. A benevolent ruler, he was beloved by his people and valued as an important and wise member of the ruling council of Xylona's flock. Although a reluctant warrior, his deeds on the battlefield were legendary and he never took a backward step. His courage and resolve were put to their greatest test in a period known as the Vampire Incursions. Over several months, the vampires of the White Spine launched relentless raids into the forests of Xylonia. His lands, close to Whisper Vale, bore the brunt of these attacks, and eventually his forces were overwhelmed. In a valiant last stand, Lord Darien and ten of his personal guard held the keep, allowing the remaining residents and soldiers to escape to Whisper Vale itself. These actions saved many lives, but cost Lord Darien his own. He and his guard were honoured among the various elfdoms as true heroes, but little did they know that Lord Darien had in fact been captured by the vampires rather than killed. Subjected to various horrific experiments by vampire mages, this once noble elf became a twisted mockery of a being. Eventually released by the vampires, this now undead monstrosity wandered the edges of Xylernia, looking for sentient creatures to kill and eat. He found his way to the camp of the Red Hellions, and Mang immediately recognised the fear this undead monster would instil in his enemies. Known as Darian the Undead, he is now an important member of the Red Hellions. Very cool. Um, 
such a like such a detailed backstory for him there. I, I almost feel invested in his kind of thing now, and so sad that uh, so sad. It's a heartbreaker, isn't it? He's yeah. like this reluctant hero, and then yeah, he's been turned into this monster. Yeah, and this awesome big uh, sword with the kind of green effect on it. You got that from Dennis. I did. Dennis, God bless his soul, is a a Dennis wonderful Derby. human being. Um, and I asked him a couple of years ago now um, if he'd paint some pieces for me. Um, there was, I think, there was some action fu- figure fusion pieces, uh, and his response was, "No, those pieces are crap." And I was like, oh. "That's fine, no problem at all." Um, <laughs> Dennis is honest, though. You know, Dennis is very honest. Yeah, yeah, to a fault, um, as we'd say yeah. in Ireland. And then it was my birthday a couple of days later, and he messaged me going, oh, "Happy birthday!" And then a couple of weeks after that, uh, a figure, a fully painted custom figure, arrived through the post. Wish me a happy birthday. Amazing. Um, and it was a goblin in uh, patina, with patina armor. I got it in my display. It's absolutely amazing. Um, and it came with this sword. And to be honest, this sword is, I think, just a little bit too big for the goblins. So I was looking for something else to put it with. And this one, it's got that sort of ethereal sort of feel to it, but it yeah. also look, yeah. gives that foresty green sort of look as well. So I thought it worked well with this, uh, with this character. Yeah. And, and I also- turned the... Um, I turned the cloak into a skirt piece as well with this one, just to give it a slightly different. Nice, one. good idea. And it, it, you could also get the p- kind of Poxus vibe off the sword as well. You know, the kind of diseased, yes. kind of undead, dead. You know, whatever. If you get a, uh, it, there's poison on this sword, and if you get a whack of it, you're going to turn into a, a zombie undead. Yeah. Yeah. No, I had a lot of fun writing the backstory for that one. Uh, well, for all yeah. of them, I loved in the bios yeah. as much as the figures, to yeah. be honest. But I love the, the like that you get me to really like the original character, and then I see this like being in front of me, and I'm like, oh, how can that be the same guy? Right. Cool this one. okay. Uh, I meant to say this before, but uh, I was going to say which is my favorite, and this is my favorite looking custom. Maybe the previous guy was the bios, maybe my favorite, but this is the look of this guy is amazing. Bring yeah, this, chaos. Is, this is one of my favorites. Um, this is a combination of bits that I had for two different figures originally. Um, so the, the head and the sword were going to be used for one particular figure. Um, and then the, the shield and the torso for a different figure. And um, they were going to be corrupted Templars was the original plan. But rather than that, I was like, do you know what? They're red and black. They're going to fit in really well with it. the Hellions. Here we go. Um, and obviously, the, you know, the design screams chaos, Warhammer sort of thing. Yeah. You know, that was obviously the inspiration. It's, it's heavy metal well. as a figure. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Yeah. And I wanted to give it, so if you can just about see one of the hooves poking out there, but it's got hooves as well sort of thing to give it that real sort of beast, chaos, beast man type feel to it as well from the Warhammer realm. Uh, Despite the general assumption that the northern lands of Mythos are nothing but a snowy and icy wasteland, they in fact have several distinct areas within them, that many many of which are snow-free. One of these areas is avoided by all who know of its existence and is called the Chaos Wastes. Almost no one who has ventured into these wastes has returned sane. Almost all wake at night screaming of demons, terrifying rituals and foul ancient gods. They talk in hushed garbled tones of mighty warriors clad in heavy armour, and brandishing the symbols of their demon gods. They talk of human sacrifices and bloodlust, of foul magic swirling constantly in the air, and an upcoming apocalyptic invasion. Those in the South believe these stories to be nothing more than horror stories and nonsense. Those on the East Coast, though, have encountered one of these chaos warriors. The bringer of chaos, as he calls himself, is a massively imposing being clad in heavy armour with red skin and clawed nails. His helmet bears the marks of his demon god and his sword is a twisted weapon designed to inflict death and inspire fear. His god sent him south upon hearing of the Red Hellions, believing them to be possible future recruits. Mang, though, believes this warrior simply joined the Hellions to gain wealth and kill. Little does he know the brutal warrior has other, even fouler plans for the Hellions. So tell us about the parts here. Yeah, so... The um, action figure fusion designed. Um, I think they're all part of the same set, but the torso might be part of a different set originally. Um, they were painted by a guy called Dan Drews, who did some painting for me a 
oh, a couple of years ago now. Um, don't, he used don't to be on the scene, but then. no, he's he sort of disappeared off the scene now. Um, you, you get some painters that do that; they you know sort of come in for a little bit and then just you know go their own way. Um, the shield was painted by uh, by Zemo uh, from Prop Masters again, sort of thing. But it's it's got the real Warhammer feel. I mean, that sword is just wicked and horrible. It's, it's got bonkers, yeah. spikes all over it. It's massive. It's um, you know the shield itself with a you know the, the sort of skull emblem and that sort of thing and then the helmet now the helmet actually is slightly broken so when it was first done if you see the the, the points at the top of it there yeah. should be another one um pointing up the opposite direction i did this um, one which oh, is the missing. top left yes because yeah i, I was I wondering dropped... if that i wonder i was wondering if that that was intentional yes i was uh, oh a while back now i was taking it off the original figure um and foolishly didn't have a proper hold of it and it pinged off and landed on the floor um, and that bit came off, and I've not been able to find that bit. So it's somewhere in that room. But I actually quite like this. I think it gives it I just think that it little good, bit of asymmetrical yeah. sort of feel yeah. to it. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is a, th- this figure looks like it's going to be dangerous just to pick up, to put on the shelf, because <laughs> you might stab yourself. Yes, you can definitely get stabbed by this one. Um, I tried with the bio to blend it into like the Warhammer thing too, so... You know, apocalyptic invasion from the north, which is very much the Warhammer thing, the, the chaos wastes, the language yeah. around swirling magic and all that sort of stuff. But put it into a mythos setting. So really happy with how this one came out. Right. Ram. Does what it says Ram in the tin. He's one of the more boring ones, I'm afraid, but I do like him. It's it's the head sculpt that really sold this for me. It's yeah. uh, it's a really great head sculpt. Um by uh Stephen and Emil. Um again, Wolfgang Customs. Uh, and then painted by Simon Crow. It's um, proper like a little beast man sort of feel to it. Yeah. Ram, as he is known to the other Red Hellions, is a Remorian, a wicked race from the far north of Mythos. Like the rest of his kin, he is evil by nature, and he enjoys nothing more than torture and murder. Pale-skinned due to the climate they live in, these creatures enjoy the fear in their enemies' faces when they see the white skin with blood splattered all over it. He is the perfect fit for Mang's army, and is one of its most brutal members. So was he going to be a vampire ram before? No, um, I just, I sort of gave Simon sort of free reign and just said, you know, do yeah. whatever you like with this one. And he just came out with a really cool colour scheme. So at that point, it's, yeah. like, awesome. it's not a vampire and that's fine. What can I do that would fit in with like a pale skin and that sort of thing? And it's a real contrast, obviously, to the rest of the body. Yeah. And the other thing to note here is he's got the Vortog hammer. Which is he probably does. the best paint job on, on that hammer because there's a lot of weathering. Yeah. yeah. Um, and again, the weathering sort of ties in with the um, Pretoria Newit figure, which has got some weathering on some parts of that as well. So, Right. Another very cool looking dude here. Yes. This, this I love this head sculpt. I think it's one of my favourite head sculpts yeah. um, that any 3D print party have done it's sculpted by a uh, jing john luca again i won't do the surname john i'll leave that yeah. to you um from wolf king customs and painted by jack mitchell um the weapon is an actual figure fusion one and painted by brian c again uh yeah brian c um it's from a figure that i bought from brian age i mean i bought a lot of stuff of brian since then but this is one of the very first things i bought from him um and it's got sort of crosses on you can't see it that well but it's got sort of crosses on the the mace head, which I thought was quite good for an evil warrior to have that sort of, you know, look what I've taken mm-hmm. off somebody I killed. And describe the helmet there. So the helmet is, it's, it's amazing. Um, it's, it's, you can't see much of the face. You can see the eyes and you can, yeah. there's like a slit that from the nose downwards. So you can see what sort of creatures underneath the helmet. And then it's got a very long sort of, um, chin guard as it were sort of thing with then like ram's horns coming out the side of it real yeah. evil son and what, of a gun what helmet. sort of yeah what's the f- skin color supposed to suggest is underneath there again i wasn't looking for anything in particular it was a case of go crazy with this yeah um i didn't want green i didn't want it to be i think it was designed primarily to be an orc gotcha head. but i didn't want green i didn't want a green orc i didn't want a purple orc I didn't want a red orc so it was like you know just make it any sort of creature you like so this so looks I then a bit decayed a to me yeah so in my 
bio, which uh, we'll read in a minute. Um, it's an orc that's possessed by something, which has changed its skin colour. Right. Cool. Love it. Abraxas is the chief enforcer of the Red Hellions, an orc possessed by a demon he burns with hatred for everything. His uncontrollable rage makes him a mighty and feared weapon for Mang. Its huge helmet hides the slowly decaying face of the orc that now plays host to Abraxas. This demon is an ancient being that has stalked the lands of the land for many centuries. It takes control of a host body, consumes it, and then moves to the next body. After wandering for so long, Abraxas, to his surprise, has finally found a cause he deems worthy of staying in one place for the depravity and destruction brought down by the Red Hellions. He will stay with his, this band of evil until the orc host dies. Who knows, though? He may just move to another member as he is really enjoying this malevolent work and life. Oof, that's scary. So it's and a really you, nasty demon that's getting a kick out yeah. of all this. Yeah. And you've gone for the asymmetric polder, and I just realised now. Yes. Um, that was as much to do with the horns as anything else. Um, gotcha. But yes, it, it, I think it actually works really well. It's protecting his non-weapon arm. And then he can patch yeah. the living shite out of people with the uh, the other unencumbered <laughs> arm. Um, last but not least then. Or Is maybe this last least? one? Time has flown. Yeah. You're doing well, you're doing well. You haven't lost your voice yet. <laughs> not quite. Um, so this one wasn't part of the original uh, Red Hellions. Um, which means I'm probably going to have to buy another Bichotti at some point to make up the last couple of characters. Um, but I got this head from from Zemo at Prop Masters uh, a while back. But I had I couldn't think of something, something good to do with it. And I thought, do you know what, colour-wise? It's got an Eastern vibe to it. It's a full full face helmet with a bit of chainmail underneath um, and like a red sort of plume thing coming out the back. It's like, it's got an Eastern vibe. It'll actually fit in with the Red Hellions and, you know, coming over from the East of Mythos. Emperor Mang's personal Imperial Guards are one of a species unknown to anyone but Mang himself. All anyone knows is that these red-skinned guards are immensely brutal warriors who, if threatened, leave no one alive. Mang, though, knows they are fire demons from the volcanoes surrounding his homeland. These beasts once terrorised the island home of Mang's family and were feared by all as raiders of the night. When they attacked, the demons, when they attacked, the demons left no survivors and their very touch set objects alight. They thought themselves unbeatable, but this arrogance was their downfall. Unwilling to put up with their raiding any longer, Mang's great-great-grandfather enlisted the services of Water Jin the lost lands of east of the east seas these jinns with their blue skin and power divining tattoos were more than a match for the fire demons and laid waste to the volcanoes and the demons that called them home in an act of utter desperation the demon leader traveled alone to see the king and begged for his family's lives to be spared he swore that if they were allowed to live he and his sons along with their descendants forevermore would serve the kings of the island faithfully as guards Ever since then, these demon guards have served Mang's family with unwavering loyalty. Loyalty out of fear of the water jinn's return, but loyalty nonetheless. Wow, you've managed to put a pretty good backstory on a basically a, a legion builder. Or yes, I've builder. also tied it into another custom I have, so I've got a water jinn custom. Ah, um, nice. so is he, that I've, that I've is built. he in another custom faction or... Yes, so uh, it ties into um, to a custom I've actually got of a water gin myself. Um, so I've, I've managed to link the two there. And when it talks about the water gin, their bodies having the tattoos to divine the power, that's because I used a Zaza base body for that. So it's got the black stripes and that sort of thing on it. So, um, And that gin's part of a faction called the Resistance, which will... Um, it's a very, very unusual faction. There's lots of very different things in it. There's rock men, there's crocodilians... Um, there's fungi folk there's all sorts of things so um, yeah that will be quite the one to behold when I finally get that photographed and up on display well looking forward to that and cloak made by me can you expand on that yes guy? it was literally I went through a period um, a while back now and I've still got loads of cloth where I just ordered lots of uh, different colour cloth um, did a template a cloak template and just like cutting them out so um I've got a couple of ones where I've made Templar ones. So I've got a Templar sergeant who's um, 
ogre sized. So I've I made the black robes and then a red cross sort of thing on it. So wow. I was just in a bit of a haberdashery or whatever it's called mode. Yeah. Um, so this was one of the things from that. So yeah. It's nothing fancy, but it's yeah, it's cheap as chips and it worked well. Very good. Well, um also because I had a few more minutes today, I uh, did this for you. <laughs> oh, so excellent. There they are. So I've taken all your pictures and put them into a group photo. Because uh, that would be pretty tough to do in person. Oh, I love that, John. Uh, yeah, so there you go. I'll send it looks like it's done properly as opposed to me cropping stuff and trying <laughs> to paste it in. Oh, yeah, there's like the guys <laughs> in the back are behind the guys in the front. Yeah, yeah. Mang is out the front, you know, giving orders. That's absolutely awesome. Yeah. Thank so you. There you go. So there's the red hellions. So um, pretty cool. And yep. I, I like everything. They're great going through them, but when you see them as a group, it just brings it home to you. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, there's there's 15 down and there's another three that I've got the bios for, got the bills yeah. ready. I just need to put together. So there's there's a werewolf, there's a gladiator, and there's a mummy still to appear. Excellent. So there you go. I think that's our that's your lot for this week. Um from us. I think so. Let's see what next week brings. Uh, I, I guess just one more thing to say. Uh, we got a hint that the figure obscura is possibly going to be the Legion's Ladies logo. So watch out for that. They have a new logo, the Legion's Ladies. So um, could possibly be a 2.0 figure. So your favorite, Rich? <laughs> That'll save you money. <laughs> <laughs> until he sees it and when he'll buy it anyway <laughs> until I see it and buy like eight of them yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah I want the umbrella it comes with well very cool and cool so Nate Barch did the art so I, I guess uh, yeah, that wouldn't be a surprise if it did turn out that way so there you go so Rich you get your voice back have a a beer or something thank you yes I will I'll go and um stroke my new pussies and have a beer now that that we've got cats just to clear that up everybody stay safe out there everybody (laughs) sorry yes I seem to be laughing to say that yes that's my (laughs) one So have have they got waffles for me yet? <laughs> Not yet. No. No. I'm afraid he, I'm afraid he's still alive and kicking. Ah. Oh. Cuz you know you know that whole story you gave last week about the cats and, and the neighbors and the house of the No, this is just me, you know, sending secret agents over <laughs> to get at waffles. That's what it's about. Yeah. Don't be surprised. <laughs> They've seen him. Yeah, it's, it was so funny when Milo spotted him. She just sat there and she was like, "What the hell is that?" Yeah, well, they've they've marked his cards, so you know, yeah. they're going to get him <laughs> lunch. Well, yeah. once we've tied their Polly's mess in the living room here, then they'll be in the living room soon as well. So then they can see the fish tanks, and then they can be like, "What the oh, hell are those?" No. Oh, oh no. more lunch. <laughs>